Howdy Red Dead fans, and welcome to the channel. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm Outlaws from the West, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to take a hostage in the Valentine Call to Arms map of Red Dead Online. If you're like me, and you've already played this map countless times, this is something new you can try as a way to challenge yourself. If you haven't played this map that much, you might not even be aware of a key moment which happens in between waves 4 and 5. Or, maybe you are aware of this moment and aren't quite sure what causes it. The key moment I'm referring to is when the barriers at the east end of the town, near the sheriff's office, suddenly explode and disappear. This is caused by an NPC who uses fire arrows to ignite the blaze and cause the explosion. If you're prepared at the end of wave 4 and are quick enough, you can lasso and hogtie this NPC. Then, do whatever you want with him. I've put this guy on a horse and rode him around town, I've stashed him in the stables for safekeeping, and on this occasion, I was able to carry him around for the entirety of the remaining six waves. We'll take a closer look at this so you can try it on your own, but before I show you that part of the video, just want to make sure that you understand this is not a modded video. This is actual gameplay from the PlayStation 5. As far as I'm aware, you can actually do this on the PC without modding anything, and that leads me to believe that you can also try it on Xbox. All right, so here you can see me and my friends loading into the Valentine map, and in just a moment you'll see sort of our preparation. I don't want to touch too much on this, as I have other videos which show kind of my process for how I tackle these CTAs, but just want to point this out. I was fortunate enough to have my friend Renegade and my friends Key and Braytech with me on this one, and that's important. So we're going to go around and blow up some barrels here just to make sure that no one dies accidentally. Switching to regular ammo. No need to waste our express rounds on blowing out the barrels. But yeah, this is like the first step for us. We're just going to go around and blow up some barrels. Uh, again, just wanted to point out Renegade, Key, Braytech, huge on this map because at some point I'm going to become pretty useless. I won't be able to take any tonics. Uh, I won't be able to take any meat. And they're going to have to carry me for a lot of these tougher enemies once we get to later waves. So with that being said, this is our, f our first step here. We're just going to blow up barrels. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video to wave four, the end of wave four, in between waves four and wave five to show you exactly what you need to do in order to be prepared for this. All right, so you can see with six enemies remaining in wave four, now five, down to three. I'm already preparing myself by making sure I'm on the side of the map where the sheriff's office is. It's the northeast side of the map. One enemy left here. I get my lasso out. I'm ready. Here comes a guy from around the house. It's going to be free aim, but you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Lasso him. Hog tie him. And pick him up to put him on your shoulder. So that's it. Just make sure you're ready. So we'll go through the rest of this video somewhat quickly. I'll stop to talk about a few highlights here and there. Alright, so we'll go ahead and fast forward to in between waves 5 and 6. You can see my friends are actually having to heal the allies. Uh, again, I'm pretty useless. I, if I put this guy down, I don't know what's going to happen to him. He may disappear. He may run off. My biggest concern was making sure I could try to keep him for as long as possible. So thankfully, they were able to heal everybody. And you'll see by the end of the video, I didn't have to pick up any ammo. So we really, we really got lucky here. But um, here's the start of wave six. Key, Key's looking, getting a laugh out of me having this guy on my shoulder. So another, what I thought was noteworthy moment here towards the end of wave six. If you saw just there a moment ago, my stamina had drained all the way down. So your stamina is going to drain a lot faster anytime you're carrying anything. Uh, so I kind of found myself not really in no man's land. I was next to Braytech, who was a great player. I knew he was going to be able to get some kills if I needed him to. Um, but really just wanted to kind of show him again, hey, I still have this guy and uh, I'm trying to see if we can do all 10 waves of this guy on my back, which my friends all got a pretty big kick out of. But again, most important part here is just keep an eye on that stamina level. 
Again, you can't take any tonics. So when you see like the screen start to turn blue like it just did right there, so make sure you back off your running. Stay still like I am here. Granted, it's in between waves, so it's a good time to stay as uh, still as possible. You can see right there, I, I try to take a tonic, or at least check if I can take a tonic. You can see they're all grayed out. But my stamina bar, the, the white ring with the lightning bolt, is starting to increase again. So we're going to be in good shape eventually, but you just got to be careful. You can't run around too much. So here we are at the beginning of wave seven. This war wagon, uh, Maxim gun wagon, always comes from that side, that post office side. I took a few shots at it, thinking maybe I could do something. Ultimately, Key ended up blowing it up with a dynamite. But that was a key learning exp uh, moment for me because I realized I wasn't gonna be able to take on war wagons the same way I normally would. Um, I think if you ask a lot of people I play with, they would tell you that I enjoy going right at the war wagons. I'm not really someone to run from a fight, but I had to rethink my strategy in this particular CTA because I wanted to try to keep this guy alive as long as possible. And I've seen him get ripped to shreds from a war wagon in previous rounds where I had him on the back of a horse. So I, I knew at this point, I'm like, okay, I gotta let these guys, my friends, take care of the war wagons. And I just gotta kill as many people as I can around them so that that gives them the opportunity to take advantage of, uh, gives them the opportunity to take down the war wagon. Same thing kind of here with the bucket head too. I'm just putting as many shots into him as I can, knowing that I can't reach in and grab a dynamite. Sometimes I would use a dynamite bow. Uh, I even brought Dynabo into this, but I wasn't able to do anything with him, uh, get him that way. So actually I switched to explosives, <laughs> which is kind of an interesting technique. And ultimately I ended up running completely out of dead eye. I think eventually I do get this guy with it. Yeah, there we go. I got him with an explosive round. Another noteworthy moment here in between wave seven and eight, just before the start of wave eight, I switched to high velocity. I noticed I was running a little low on regular ammo, and the rounds weren't doing maybe as much damage as I would have hoped for, so I switched over to the high velocity rounds. And if you're wondering why I'm using pistols instead of something like a Navy revolver or a Lamat, I, I'm just working on kills, headshot kills with a pistol is, is one of the awards I'm working on, so. It's really more of a farming technique than anything. I don't think the pistol is a great weapon, particularly not the Volcanics. Uh, I would much prefer to be using a Naver revolver, but it's just kind of what I was doing at the time. Another noteworthy moment here with 40 enemies left in wave nine. I see this war wagon coming down the hill by the sheriff's office. And again, I, I'm out. Like, I trust my friends to kill these war wagons and normally I would go after him myself but only interested in protecting this guy and making sure that he stays on my shoulder for the duration at this point I'm like I've come so far how great would it be if I could do all 10 waves another interesting moment I thought in wave 9 here so I sped through it but Key actually got run over by a war wagon and died I'm in slow and steady here, so this war wagon runs right into me and bounces off like nothing. So, slow and steady ability card for the win on this one. Another war wagon, so I'm going to try and make my way to the middle of town. And of course, I run into a bucket head. Trying to put as much damage into this guy, as many bullets as possible. At this point, the war wagon's down, so I retreat from him. Again, not my normal style, but... We were trying something different here and, and totally on the fly. Like I'm making this up as I go along. <laughs> All right, now here we are in between nine and 10, waves nine and 10. I saw again, I was running low on ammo. So I switched from high velocity to express. I know we've got one round left here, one wave left. So I'm gonna go with my highest, most potent ammunition, ammunition that I have. I'm also in the middle of town because, again, I know war wagons are coming. And I trust these guys to handle them, take care of them, get rid of them. Another moment in 
wave 10 with 27 enemies now left. Where I see the war wagon coming on the minimap and I'm out. Luckily, Key comes around the corner. She's headed that way. Then I see another one coming from the opposite direction. And I'm like, I gotta get out of here too. But let me try and clear some room for these guys. And now I'm off and running. Thankfully, one of my teammates got it. Alright, now with only a handful of enemies left in wave 10, we are almost done. We all kind of decided impromptu to make sure that we could all be in the same area for the last enemy. So there goes Key, here comes Braytech, Renegade's right behind, one enemy left, and this is how we finished it out. Thought that was pretty cool. Again, couldn't have done it without those teammates of mine, friends of mine, Key, Renegade, Braytech. So big props to them. Thank you guys for that. And uh, this this cutscene always cracks me up. It looks like we failed. It'll say Valentine defended or overrun, but you can see from the other footage that we were not overrun. Congrats to uh, Renegade for MVP. I came in third, which, you know, for running around with a body on my back, I didn't think it was too bad. So, anyway, that's how you do it. That's how you take a hostage in Red Dead Online using the Valentine map, Valentine Call to Arms map. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like. It really does help the channel out. If you're new and you've never been to the channel before, first time experiencing this content, you want more of it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn the notifications on and send it to all. Till next time, everyone. Take care.